Hello everyone, my name is Darkizer and welcome to my very first Space Engineers tutorial video. Uh, I've had lots of friends of mine ask me recently since uh, sensors were released uh, into the game, uh, I've had my friends asking me about how sensors might be used or how they can be uh, properly programmed and I've seen some questions on the workshops as well. So I thought for my very first YouTube video, I would go ahead and do a sensor tutorial. So why don't we go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to need a sensor. So let's slap one down right there, and we'll go take a closer look. Now, unlike many blocks, uh, sensors do have an up and a down, a left and a right, back and a front. When you place the sensor on a block, uh, as you're looking at it from the front. If you see the word sensor written up right across the front of it, then you know that the top of the sensor is the, the top and so on and so forth. You can see the indicator light underneath that it's currently green. That means that I am standing within uh, one of the sensor's fields and the sensor, if it were programmed to do anything, then it would be trying to trigger whatever device I have it fastened to. And then, of course, as you leave the field, uh, the light turns blue. You can see all of the various demonstration items that I have over there. The lights are all blue because I'm not breaking any of the fields currently. Now in order to program the sensor, you go ahead and you uh, enter the control panel. Uh, here you have the uh, bar for the sensor's name and I strongly recommend that you name your sensors uh, to give them some sort of a designator as to either what they do or where they might be located. Uh, if you have more than one or two sensors on a project, then as you can see here from the control panel, it starts to get a little daunting. Uh, if you were to place a large number of sensors and then you had to go back and troubleshoot them somehow, you can see that that would be a bit of a mess. Now, we also have the show on HUD option, and I'm going to recommend uh, that you have this on uh, at the moment, and I'll demonstrate why in a few minutes. Uh, we also have the uh, all of the various uh, default settings uh, when you first place the sensor. These are the various sensor fields, uh, left, right, bottom, top, back, and front. And the default setting for those is 5 meters. Uh, minimum range for the sensor field is 1 meter, and maximum range is out at 50 meters. Now, as you can see by the uh, power input, uh, sensors do require power, and... Uh, the more you have the sensor field dialed up, the more power they draw. But even at, at the top end, they don't require too much. So uh, unless you have a large number of sensors or unless you have them all dialed up to, to 40 or 50 meters or so, I wouldn't worry too much about the power draw. Now, down below, we have another default setting, which is to detect players. Uh, you can also set sensor to detect floating objects, and that can be or... Uh, or uh, components that might be floating around. Uh, then we have small ships, large ships, and detect stations. Now these are not mutually exclusive as you can see. You can, you can set them to uh, all be on or all be off or some combination of the two. Now the setup actions button, uh, it opens your toolbar config, your G config, and these are all of the various items that can be controlled by the sensor that are attached to whatever project you're working on, your ship or your station. And at the bottom, we have a left-hand box and a right-hand box. The left-hand box is whatever the sensor is going to try to do um, when you first enter the field. Uh, the right-hand box is whatever the sensor is going to try to do uh, as you leave the field. So, for instance, uh, if I drag down my beacon then uh, I can set it to uh, turn something on, turn something off, uh, toggle it on or off, and, and so on and so forth. Now let me go ahead and back out of this, and we'll delete that to try to avoid confusion. And we'll go get a little bit of a better demonstration. Now a minute ago I recommended that you leave the uh, visible on HUD button uh, on at least while you're setting your your sensors up and this is why um, when you open up your astronauts terminal and you go to the info tab we have our show sensors field range 
that you can click on. And now, as you can see, you can see all of the fields from all of your sensors that you may have set up. And this is uh, the setting that you use when you're, you're moving around your project and you're trying to get all your fields set up just right. Now, um, as you can see, the easiest thing that you can do uh, with a sensor is you can toggle a, a specific device on and off. Uh, I'm, I enter the field, the light goes on, I, I exit the field, and the light goes off. I currently have this particular field shrunk down to one meter in every direction, except for directly in front, where I have it set to ten meters. Now, of course, uh, those of us that are Star Trek fans and science fiction fans, when we got uh, sensors, the, about three minutes after we, we got the things, the first thing we started doing was setting them on all of our doors on all of our projects so that we can have all of our uh, nifty Star Trek doors. And as you can see, I have this one set up so that the door will automatically open and close. I only have one sensor on the door instead of having one sensor on each side. And that's primarily because the sensors are quasi-magical in the fact that they will actually detect um, behind them even uh, through the block that they're placed on. So this sensor is currently detecting through the block that I've placed it on, uh, and it's detecting 10 meters behind it. Now you have to uh, allow for that when you're putting your, your sensor ranges uh, in, because, for instance, uh, this sensor will trigger when I'm approaching the door at 10 meters, but back this way, the thickness of the block has to be allowed for. So this one, the sensor field, only actually reaches 7.5 meters because it's 10 meters from the back of the sensor, which happens to be the front of the block. So when you're setting up your uh, your field ranges on your sensors, you have to allow for the thickness of whatever block you've placed them in. Now, to give you an idea of how this works, again, I have this set up uh, door open and closed uh, on the left-hand side. Now, uh, one of the things about uh, sensors with the, the, the two boxes at the bottom, you cannot use the same setting on both sides. Here we have uh, door open and closed, and here we have door open closed again. It will not let me duplicate a specific command on both sides. So what you have to do, we'll go ahead and put this one back, is uh, you take whatever item that the sensor is controlling, and you go ahead and you make it a separate group. These, of course, are all of my, my different groups from my control panel. And in this particular case, I just named it door closed. And so now I can set that. Uh, these are both set to toggle the door, either, either open or close, basically to reverse whatever state that it's in. And now that it's on a different group with a different name, the... Uh, the system will now register that and as you can see we have door close and it's just our door saved as a block group. Now over here we're demonstrating that we can use multiple sensors to trigger multiple things at one time. Uh, in this particular case one sensor is activating the uh, rotor which I, I preset to 8 uh, RPM when I built the rotor, and the other one is turning the lights on. But one of the things that you might notice is the fact that there's a slight discrepancy uh, in the sensor fields, even though I have them both set to 10 meters, and there's a sweet spot that I can get into where one of the sensors is activated, but the other one is not. And that is because uh, something else that the developers recently gave us is the ability instead of using a slider for some of the, the, the slider bars that we have you can hold down your control key you can left click and you can actually type in a value now in this particular case uh, I have a set of 10 meters but it's actually registering as 10.29 meters I can go ahead and I can manually set that to, to exactly 10 meters and then I can do that again up here. And again, I have my, my front range set at 10 meters. But this one is actually 10.76. And both of them, uh, I just took the slider bar and dragged it to 10 meters. But as you can see, slider bars are uh, less than perfect. 
So now that I have both of those set to 10 meters, you can see that there is no longer a discrepancy between the fields, and now they will both be triggering at the same time. Now, something else that we were overjoyed to see uh, not too many weeks ago was uh, blast doors. So now we have, uh, with sensors, we have blast doors that can open automatically and then close behind us, just like our, our normal personnel doors. In this particular case, uh, I have this blast door set for something you know of a role-playing environment. I have uh, the lights set up here to, to flash on and off, uh, indicating that the, uh, the blast door is open and so the bay is currently exposed uh, to hard vacuum. Now, you can only set each sensor uh, to one item. So you can, you can set it to trigger something on uh, or off. But in order to get both of these to work at the same time, I basically set up the second sensor on the back of the block. So it's a little bit like the door that I showed you earlier. And so as I approach, the, uh, the lights in the door will trigger and then when I leave the field then the lights will go off and uh, the blast door will close. Now this is something that I set up uh, when I was uh, in the process of setting up the tutorial. Something that occurred to me is uh, I'm not a very good pilot. Uh, another recent update uh, gave us cameras so we can, uh, we can see out different directions of our, our ships and our stations and so forth, which is very, very handy for remote control. But um, So when I'm getting ready to land uh, my ship, for instance, I will switch to my belly camera so that I'm looking straight down at my landing field or my landing deck um, so that I can see where I'm going and what I'm doing. However, it's still hard to judge distance. So in this particular case for a landing field, uh, I've set up a sensor to, to trigger some landing lights when I reach 10 meters. But looking at a great big flat uh, landing field, it's still kind of hard to judge distance, especially if you're looking through a camera. So I set up a second sensor on the underside of the platform, and that is set to uh, trigger a different set of lights when I reach 5 meters. Now, again, that's 5 meters from the back of the sensor, which is 2.5 meters, uh, from the surface of the deck. And uh, in a real situation, as opposed to the tutorial, I would, I would definitely have to have the sensor off to one side um, and the, the lights spread out further so that I don't, uh, I don't melt everything with my, my thrusters and so forth as I'm coming in for a landing. Now, because I play in survival a lot and because I play solo quite a bit, um, I like automation. I like having as much of my station set up as possible to operate uh, automatically so I don't have to keep uh, toggling everything on and off and going into a bunch of control panels. Now in this particular case, um, I have a piston arm set up on the station and I have it connected to a connector. So uh, if I were, for instance, uh, a ship and I were getting ready to offload uh, material or, or load supplies, then I would fly in front of the connector. Uh, one end of my ship would break this sensor field. And I have this sent all the way out to 50 meters, which is probably a little extensive. Uh, I would probably shrink this down uh, a bit to save a little bit on power because I'm very frugal with my, my power in survival mode. And then the piston extends, and then I can hook up to my, my connector here, and I can load and offload material. When I'm done, I can disconnect uh, from the station, and then as the ship leaves, then the piston will automatically retract. This works particularly well for larger ships that tend to be uh, not quite as maneuverable, uh, and they also tend to have uh, quite a few projections. They have things sticking out of them, uh, warp nacelles or, or what have you. Um, so when the piston is retracted, then the... Uh, the connector is less of a, a navigational hazard. Now, I have a couple of sensors set up over here, and these are set so that they are not uh, revealed on the HUD because these sensors are set to 50 meters, uh, and that covers most of the station. So they would they would tend to wash out uh, everything else, so they would start to obscure uh, some of the other sensors. Uh, one of these is 
uh, attached to the beacon that I have up on top, and the other one is attached to my uh, gravity field generator. And this is, again, a, a, an energy-saving measure. Uh, if I leave my station and I'm going somewhere to do mining or whatever, and let me turn my HUD on as a demonstration, as I get farther away, the beacon comes on uh, so that I can find my way back, and uh, the gravity generator goes off because, well, I'm not within 50 meters of my gravity generator, which means I'm off my station, which means why should I have the gravity generator on? I'm just burning power and wasting uranium. Now, uh, this is again because I'm navigationally challenged. Um, and I'm sure that at some point in the future, either the developers or the modders will set uh, sensors so that they have a longer than 50 meter range. But for now, 50 meters is what we have. And again, it's for me, it's mostly a, uh, a power saving measure. Now, in order to make all of this work, in order to be able to see the sensor fields on your HUD, uh, you need to have an antenna, as we mentioned before. Um, the sensors will still work. Let's remove the antenna real quick. The sensors will still work, and they will still perform whatever functions you have them programmed to do. Um, but you are not able to see uh, the sensor field ranges uh, on your HUD. So let's go ahead and put that back. And then again, you can see everything here. Now, uh, I hope that the tutorial has been reasonably uh, informative. Uh, and I hope that uh, you've been given some, some ideas as to how you might set up uh, some sensors on your own projects. As I said, uh, I like automating things, and so for me, having sensors that can automatically open and close doors and, and turn equipment on and off as I'm entering or leaving an area, uh, for me, these things are very, very handy. And this is just scratching the surface. Uh, you can have sensors set up in a variety of different chains to, uh, to turn things on and off and, and open and close things uh, as you move about through your station or, or through your ship. Uh, if you have any suggestions as to uh, how we can improve the tutorial, for instance, if you have any specific things that you would like to try to work out with sensors, uh, items that you would like to trigger on or off in a specific pattern or what have you, then go ahead and drop those down in the comments below, and I'll see if I can update the video to include that. We have quite a bit of platform left, so uh, we can go ahead and uh, put some more examples down there. Uh, if you like the video, then, of course, likes are always welcome, um, and subscriptions doubly so. Uh, I plan on doing a series of these tutorial videos, since I, I still have friends that have been playing for some time, that still seem to be having a little bit of trouble working out some of the some of the finer details of some things. So uh, this is going to be the first tutorial video in, a, in what I hope to be a series. Um, if you have any ideas as to what the next video should be about, then uh, I would appreciate a comment on that as well. Um, as I said, my name is Darkizer, and I look forward to seeing you in the game. Have a good day.